I'm Alex with Storyline Travel. At Storyline Travel, we focus on helping families create stories through travel that they'll tell for a lifetime. And today we're going to talk about different types of cruising. We're really glad that you're here. When you hear the term cruising, what comes to mind? I think for me and my family, the first thing that comes to mind are those big ocean cruises that you take out of the Port of Miami or Galveston or San Francisco. But other people have different thoughts and today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the different types of cruising, what makes up these types of cruising, and pick one that might be right for your family. Before we get started, I'd like to ask for you to give this video a like. Also subscribe. We're here every week giving you tips and tricks about family vacations here in the U.S. and abroad. And turn on that notification bell. That way you know when we post a new video or new content. All right, let's get started. I'm going to break this up into two different categories, ocean cruising and river cruising. So let's start with ocean cruising. Ocean cruising is what our family thinks of when we think of cruising. These ships tend to be on the bigger side. Even the smaller ocean uh, cruises uh, tend to be bigger. They have uh, several hundred to thousand uh, guests on the start, up to some of the newest ships that have launched, uh, like Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, that have you know four to five thousand guests on board. These uh, bigger cruise ships you'll find with itineraries from three to five nights all the way up to world cruises that can go over 200 nights. Can you imagine spending 200 nights on a cruise ship? One of the advantages of these bigger ships is that they have more amenities to offer. So you'll have more activities on board, whether it's stages with shows and theaters, or sporting activities, uh, a sports court like a basketball court or rock climbing wall. Um, Royal Caribbean has their flow rider. Uh, Norwegian has a go-kart track. These are some of the things that you may see on board, but even the more traditional cruise lines that don't have the outlandish activities will still have water slides and pools, hot tubs, and not just one, but multiple across uh, across the ship. In addition, uh, ocean cruising, you'll find multiple restaurants, both some included with your fare, like a main dining room, or specialty restaurants that for an additional fee, you can go and enjoy a specific food or experience. On ocean cruising, one of the things that concerns a lot of people, and it is a valid concern, is rough waters. Like in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico, it could be a hurricane coming or on the Pacific, a typhoon. The wonderful thing about these ocean cruise ships is the captain can just plot a new course. Now, sometimes that means the port of calls change, but it allows you to continue your vacation and to enjoy it while being able to uh, go around the storm and stay safe. However, it does uh, bring up one thing and that is ocean cruising even with some of the new technology and stabilizers that are there, seasickness is potential for people doing an ocean cruise. It's good to make sure you have uh, over-the-counter medication like uh, uh, seasickness medicine that you can pick up at your local pharmacy, or maybe some uh, ginger ale or, or ginger tablets if it's not too terribly bad. In ocean cruising, you tend to have multiple types of rooms. So not just inside ocean view, balcony, and suites, but even within those categories, multiple rooms. Um, inside that can only sleep one or two. Balcony rooms that can sleep two to four, or suites that can sleep bigger families, four or five, depending on the size of the suite, even more. Ocean cruises go all over the world. 
So you'll have ports in the US that will go to the Caribbean or to Canada or on the West Coast, maybe to Mexico and um, up to Alaska. But they also do foreign destinations, um, cruising the Mediterranean in Europe or the North Sea on the north part of Europe. Um, these world cruises that go all over the Pacific down to Australia, uh, Asia ports, around through the Indian Ocean, so many to, to mention. You'll have um, some really unique itineraries, some of the ocean cruises that will go through canals like the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal. And it gives you a chance to experience the world, visit different countries while being on one ship. And finally, I want to touch a little bit on a subset of ocean cruising that's really popular right now and taking off, and that's expedition cruising. Expedition cruises will tend to be smaller ships and they'll go to unique locations for the adventurous type. Maybe you'll go visit the Galapagos Islands or go to one of the Arctic areas, either to the North Pole or the South Pole. And these ships do tend to be um, more unique when they go to the poles in that they are stronger hulls. They may, have, they may be icebreaker ships. A lot of these ships will have additional features on board for the colder weather and you know, prepare you to get off the ship and go into some of these um, you know, more remote destinations. They do tend to be smaller ships, as I said, so you have fewer guests. And they also tend to be more educational in nature where you'll have uh, scientists on board or lecturers about the different regions you'll go. So that gives you an idea of, of ocean cruising. But another popular cruise type that's really gaining a lot of traction is river cruising. So let's talk about the difference of that. With river cruising, the ships are much smaller in nature and really are capped at how, how big the ship can be. A lot of that has to do with the rivers themselves and you know, how wide or how deep the river is at different places, in addition to bridges that are built. The ship can't be too tall or they'll be unable to go under the bridges and then be stuck. There have actually been cases with river cruises where when the, the river is, is too low or too high, depending on the weather, that that ship can no longer um, follow its itinerary because it has to wait for the water to regulate so it can sail from the port. Unlike ocean cruising, where you tend to port in the morning or early afternoon and then leave in the evening so that you're cruising on the water at night, river cruising may happen during the day, it may happen at night, or it may not happen at all. You may stay in a port much longer. River cruising, when it does port, will put you in the middle of a city center, right, right in the bustling part of it. And you'll be able to just step right off your ship into the heart of the city, into a tour. Because these ships are smaller, there's fewer guests. You're more looking at one to 200 guests, maybe 300 on some of the bigger um, U.S. river cruises in, uh, the, on the Mississippi, but for the most part you're in that 1 to 200 range. Because of that, uh, port of calls and excursions taken off those port of calls will be much fewer. Typically there's one, maybe two, and everyone's expected to be a part of that. For river cruising, um, if you happen to miss or on purpose miss uh, getting back on board, it's usually just a quick ride to the next port. They're much closer together than they are with ocean cruising and you can get on board. In fact, in Europe, there are several uh, ports where you're given the option to uh, take an excursion that has a bicycle where you can ride from one port to the next to catch the ship. So definitely a, a different experience there. Porting with multiple ships at, at a port of call on a river cruise is much different than with an ocean cruise. With an ocean cruise, you have docks 
with um, multiple berths so that if you have two, three, four ships at a, at a dock, they all have their own gangplank, they all have their own way to get off, and it's, it's easier for those maybe with uh, mobility challenges. Or they'll all tender off and they use their own, um, their own tender boats to get you from the ship onto the shore. Again, multiple options. With river cruising, it's very different. Typically, the ports are, are small and just enough for one ship. And in Europe, it's actually not uncommon that when two to three river cruises need to port in the same city, that they'll stack one ship ports and then one ties off right next to it. That really creates a challenge for those with, um, with mobility limitations as you tend to have to cross over not just your ship to get to the port, but the ship that you've tied up next to. On river cruising, because of the uh, shallowness of the rivers in, in many places and the fact that you have land on both sides, you don't have the, um, the same issues with ocean cruising related to seasickness. In fact, in many cases on a, on a river cruise, you, you barely feel the motion at all. Uh, they do tend to be a bit, a bit slower. And, and again, you don't have that jostling, um, at least to the significant level that you do on an ocean cruise. However, uh, because you are somewhat locked uh, on the right and the left by the banks of the river, uh, when a, a, a you know, really bad storm comes through and there's lots of rain and lots of wind, um, it's not as easy to uh, change course as it is with an ocean cruise. So you may find yourself on the inside riding out a, a bad rainstorm or um, you know, taking emergency precautions so that you can avoid you know, the, the storm, depending just how strong it is, uh, docking or anchoring, you know, to the side. So the way that weather is handled, you know, it, it can be done safely in both cases, but they are handled quite differently. I will say river cruising um, does get a notch up in that your chance of getting seasick is significantly less than with an ocean cruise. Let's talk a little bit about the cost between the two. With river cruising, the costs do tend to be a little higher. Some is that because of the smaller guest count, you have, um, you have more service, more servers taking care of you. The ratio is much better on a river cruise. In addition, uh, you'll find excursions tend to be more included and inclusive on a river cruise than on the ocean cruise, where most ocean cruises, non-luxury uh, ocean cruise lines, tend to not have those excursions included. And there, as I said before, there's only one or two um, excursions available versus an ocean cruise that may have dozens of, of options available. So that gives you some compare and contrast uh, between the two. Have you ever done a river cruise before? Would you consider a river cruise? When you think of cruising, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? Ocean cruising or river cruising? While ocean cruising does take you around the world um, from different ports, river cruising can be found around the world. And at Storyline Travel, we believe every adventure is a story waiting to be told.